Welcome to another episode of Midnight Cry Media Stories. Today, I want to tell you a story about heaven versus hell. I want to tell you a story of happiness versus misery. When I was young, I used to watch a lot of television. I mean, a lot of television. And one of my favorite shows was The Twilight Zone. It was something about the theme music and the plot twists that always got me. Throughout college and subsequent years, I never thought much about the show. But when I decided to really start practicing my professed Christianity, there was an episode that came back to my mind. It was a story about what true happiness looks like and how this affects our idea of what heaven is and what hell is. Today, I want you to learn a spiritual lesson that I learned. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The episode opens up with a man committing burglary and he's subsequently chased by the police. He begins shooting at them as he's making his getaway, and he quickly comes to a fence and starts climbing it as he tries to escape. While he's doing this, the police officers shoot him in the back and he falls to the ground. In the next scene, the man is woken up by another man in a white suit that introduces himself as the criminal's guide. The criminal tries to rob him, but the man simply offers him money and everything else that he's ever wanted. The guide takes the man to a fancy hotel, showing him around and telling him that everything he sees is his. Eventually, the thief figures out that he's been killed and that he's in the afterlife. Now for a quick disclaimer. I believe that the Bible teaches that when someone dies, we experience a sleep, only to be awakened at the first or second resurrection, where we will then receive the reward of heaven or hell. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to use this story to make a point. The way Jesus used the parable about the rich man and Lazarus as it related to heaven and hell. So please keep that in mind. Now back to the story. As I said, it turns out that the man was killed when the police officer shot him and he figures I must be in heaven. The reason for this is because he has everything he's always wanted. He has all the food he wants. He gets to live in a fancy hotel. He's surrounded by women that meet his standard of beauty. When he gambles, he wins every time. When he hits the slot machine, he hits the jackpot every time, and he has someone to meet his every need. Soon enough, he wonders how he made it into heaven, because when he reviews the record of his life, it looks like this. Age of six, slaughtered small dog. Well, why not? He bit me. Age of seven, stole 14 toys from dime store. Age of eight, organized street gang, the angels. Age of nine, broke in the bicycle store. Well, what is this anyway? Your record? Gangs, robbery, gambling, and so much more. But he's made it into heaven. He's getting what he wants, and that's all he cares about. But eventually, something strange happens. He gets extremely frustrated and upset, and I'll let him tell you why. Anything I say, anything I say, knock it off, will you? Is something wrong? Look, I've been in this dump for a month and I can't stand it anymore. But I don't understand. I'm bored, bored. I mean, there's no excitement around here, no kicks. So there you have it. He gets tired of the women, tired of winning at gambling, tired of having his every desire met. And then the most interesting thing happens. I don't think I belong here. I don't think I fit in. Oh, nonsense. Of course you do. Oh, no, I mean it. I mean it. It's just somebody must have goofed. If I got to stay here another day, I'm going to go nuts. Look, look, I don't belong in heaven, see? I want to go to the other place. He actually asks his guide to send him to the other place. He doesn't want to be in heaven anymore. He wants to go to hell. This moment is the moment that I never forgot when I first saw this show. And it's the moment that came back to my mind when I started getting serious about Christianity. And it was this right here. Heaven? <laughs> Whatever gave you the idea you were in heaven, Mr. Valentine. This is the other place. All I can say is have mercy. He thought that he was in heaven and wanted to go to hell, but he was already in hell. He just didn't realize it yet. You see, he thought that heaven was having access to and the adoration of women that he found attractive. He thought that heaven was fancy clothes and a fancy home. He thought that heaven was gambling and always winning, getting to eat whatever he desired. To make a sad story short, he thought that heaven was having whatever he wanted whenever he wanted it. And now, he was going to be stuck having everything his way for eternity. 
and the show was basically making the premise that this would be hell. Although this show is fantasy, the premise of this episode is firmly grounded in reality. The only problem is that the majority of the men, women, and children on this planet have not come to understand this reality yet. Because especially in our world of TikTok and Instagram, in our society dominated by celebrity culture, where everyone is trying to have it all, where everyone is trying to be famous, most people think that they're chasing heaven and what they wind up with is hell. You see, happiness and contentment cannot come from having the adoration of the opposite sex the money to buy any and everything that you want, and to win, win, win all the time. The Bible puts it this way in 1 John chapter 2, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. With all of the things pulling at our attention, in reality, there are only two things in this world, lust, and pride, and neither of these things will bring us heaven. Much like the thief in that Twilight Zone episode, it will bring temporary satisfaction. However, living for self will never, and I mean never, bring us lasting happiness. Many have tried, all have failed. Just read the book of Ecclesiastes, and you'll see that King Solomon had it all, and yet he was absolutely miserable. Moses also understood this reality, as it says of him in Hebrews chapter 11, that by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Moses was in line to be the king of perhaps the greatest nation on earth at that time. And much like that thief in the Twilight Zone, he would have had access to everything that he wanted when he wanted it but he chose rather to live for others. He emptied himself and chose rather to suffer affliction in a desert with the children of God than to enjoy the pleasures of earth for a season because he knew that everything here is temporary and doesn't really satisfy, even if we're having it our way all the time. I told you in the beginning of this story that I remembered this episode of The Twilight Zone when I started taking my Christianity seriously, and it was because of a quote from the book Steps to Christ. It says, In his sinless state, man held joyful communion with God, but after his sin, he could no longer find joy in holiness. He sought to hide from the presence of God. Such is still the condition of the unrenewed heart. It is not in harmony with God and finds no joy in communion with him. The sinner could not be happy in God's presence. He would shrink from the companionship of holy beings. Could he be permitted to enter heaven, it would have no joy for him. Heaven would be to him a place of torture. He would long to be hidden from him who is its light and the center of its joy. Amazing. If an unconverted person were permitted to enter heaven, it would be a place of torture. But couldn't God just let them in anyway if he's so loving? The quote goes on to say, It is no arbitrary decree on the part of God that excludes the wicked from heaven. They are shut out by their own unfitness for its companionship. The glory of God would be to them a consuming fire. They would welcome destruction that they might be hidden from the face of him who died to redeem them. Amazing. Everyone says that they want to go to heaven. But if our minds have not been transformed by God, the communion with God and holy beings, and the unselfish nature of heaven's inhabitants would be absolute torture. Now, while the premise of that quote is different, just like that thief in the twilight zone, they would welcome destruction. And so today, I want to ask you to reevaluate what you think will bring you happiness. It's not getting everything you want. It's not living for self. The reality is that true happiness can only come from living for God and living for others. And I pray that we will all come to see that before it's too late. If you've been blessed by these Midnight Cry Media stories, don't forget to share these messages with others and check the description below for the Midnight Cry Media stories playlist for more challenging and inspiring messages like this. May God continue to bless you as you make your choice.